now. We talked about the delivery system to the injectors. Uh, the primary reason, of course, is to deliver the correct amount of fuel at all engine speeds. And the injectors are what's going to do that. They're the last piece uh, of the puzzle to put the fuel into the combustion chamber. And the correct amount of fuel is all scheduled by the fuel control and the fuel pump. And lastly, by the injector nozzles. Now, if you have a hydromechanical control or an all mechanical fuel control, you end up doing the trimming, you're going to be the one that's going to set that fuel scheduling. There are some parameters for that. It's like setting a carburetor on an internal combustion engine. <coughs> okay, so the fuel has to be delivered in small droplets at all engine speeds. So it's going to be shaped conically where it's ejected from the nozzle. So that fuel mist <coughs> has to be combusted so the flame doesn't do any damage to the line around the engine. And again, this combustion process, the flame has to be completely burned out before it gets to the end of the combustion chamber. Most ordinarily, the flame only goes a third to a half of the distance it will travel back through the combustion chamber. On starting, when there's an excess of fuel, it will probably travel the full distance of the combustion chamber. But during normal operation, a third to a half of the way back, the combustion chamber is pretty, pretty typical. Now, the earlier engines used a simplex type nozzle. There's still a lot of engines being built use a simplex type nozzle. And uh, basically, a simplex nozzle is nothing more than just kind of the end of a squirt gun. That's all it is. Okay. It'll put out a small amount of spray. Uh, you don't want a steady stream of fuel coming out, but it'll put out a small amount of stream, uh, spray out of the end of the nozzle. Now, pressure changes from the fuel control will cause the shape of the cone that comes out of the nozzle to change slightly, but on a simplex nozzle, it doesn't change very much. That is to say, the fan, the amount of spread, is going to change only slightly, not very much, a simplex nozzle. Okay, so most everything uses a duplex type nozzle now. It's going to use an inner cone for low speed, low flow operations. And things can change on this. So sometimes you might have two cones in operation simultaneously. Sometimes at the pressure bump, when the throttle lever angle gets higher, it may switch over to create just a larger cone with a higher flow. <coughs> so as a maintainer, do you think you ever change a fuel nozzle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very likely to change a fuel nozzle at some point. 
put some things on it. He had a couple bolts holding them on, maybe a couple packings. But it's getting down to it is the hard part sometimes because it's overlaid with hydraulic lines and electrical wire. Okay. <coughs> so on the duplex, you're also going to have an outer fuel injection ring around the inner one. It's going to be essentially two nozzles in one. So you end up with more fuel flowing for higher power, high flow settings. There's quite a lot of you that know already. These things all vary in their construction. They're all pretty simple, but they all vary in their construction. single and double entry duplex nozzles. That is to say, either one line in or two lines in. The single entry requires a pressure bump or pressure change and a flow change to switch to its secondary. chance to work in a nozzle shop. No. No. <laughs> so what they do is they have this, it's a big test machine that valves all over it. Basically what you can do is you can, and gauges, you can change the flows and the pressures. But what you do is, is the, the essence of it is, it's a box. And you have your fuel nozzle uh, you get your fuel nozzle in here, and then you've got it sitting out this way. And maybe you've got a couple of connectors on it, and you hook the fuel lines up to it. It's a pretty boring job. Now what there is, this is like a shadow box. So behind the back wall of this, this opening, so this is all uh, glass here, high, high strength glass. Behind that is a light, and it has a silhouette on it. And that silhouette goes like this. And what your job is, is to get the correct flow and the correct pressure and have this fan or this cone shadow right over the silhouette. It's just that simple. It's real easy. But there's some things inside the nozzle that you can adjust. And those are the clearances between the different levels of, of seals and, and um, screens and where things are bolted together. <coughs> there's some clearances that have to be met. And so what happens is if you get a nozzle that's been thoroughly cleaned, it could be spraying out like this. But your job is to correct flow and pressure to have it spraying within this shape right here. So you build up a set of nozzles that mimic that silhouette. You take it all day to do that. Gold ring, let me tell you, gold ring. Uh, if, you're, if you like little jobs like crossword puzzles and things, this is a job for you here. But otherwise, you'd be freaking nuts by the time you leave that. So don't, uh, just a word to the wise, if that's the only job that's available, take it, but, uh, but start looking around. Okay, so the double entry duplex nozzle is going to have a primary and a secondary feed from the fuel control. So this is going to use two lines into the nozzle, and those two lines into the nozzle are going to have different pressures on them depending on the throttle lever angle. Different pressures mean different volumes of uh, fuel that flows through. 
So you're going to have what they call rails connecting these particular nozzles together. In parallel rails, they look like little, little railroad tracks uh, running together. And some of these are going to use a flow divider in the manifold or within the fuel control unit. What this does is supplies fuel to each nozzle, the same pressure. You can imagine if you're running fuel down a line that's four feet long, what's going to be left at the end of that line? The pressure is going to be start tapering off a little bit. So you're going to have to compensate for it with extra flow. <coughs> you use a flow divider, you run the fuel out of the fuel control, and then each nozzle in turn gives its own line. Okay, so the duplex design, you're still going to have good flow rates at high power settings, and yet it's still going to be pretty darn accurate. It's going to be more accurate than a simplex ever would be. All these things are going to work by having a restricted orifice that the fuel has to flow through. They're going to have some sort of a pressure relief valve at the outlet, which only lets so much fuel through the nozzle. So we're going to use pressure control to meter the fuel volume through the nozzles. At some point, the primary side will give up to the secondary side <coughs> because the fuel pressure will change coming out of the fuel control. Now, if we can control the pressure to these nozzles, the fuel that's in the line is going to get burnt up pretty quick. And as soon as you shift, <coughs> as soon as you drop the pressure to the nozzle, uh, whatever little bit of fuel is in the uh, manifold may be recirculated back into the system, or maybe not, depending on how long the lines are. If the lines are pretty short, it may just consume the fuel if that's the end of it, especially on ones that have high uh, fuel consumption. So that little regulating pressure device is also going to prevent fuel flow at the nozzle tip uh, when you shut the thing down. It's going to keep it from dripping. Okay, now large flow nozzles are going to have what they call a chopper device in them. <coughs> what this does is it tends to cavitate the fuel, it breaks the fuel up. It begins to emulsify it, adds a little bit of air to it, and when it does that, it makes it easier for it to atomize once it goes into the combustion chamber. <clears throat> so you've all taken, uh, you got your got your slurping cups here. You give them a shake. What happens to the fluid when you when you give it a when you give it a shake? It goes from a liquid to what? Okay kind of a foamy material. And that's what you want to do with this chopper device. The chopper device helps break this stuff up before it goes out the end of the nozzle. Now you're going to have a lot of airflow holes in the, in the nozzle. <coughs> some of these are to control the mist and the shape of the fuel cone. And some of them are, are to cool the nozzle. Remember, you've got the compressor air running back across through the nozzle. Part of that is going to be used for combustion. Part of it is going to be used to shape the flow of that air 
that carries the flame. So some of the flames we want them to curl and twist. Some of them all we want to do is control the size of that flame using that high pressure air to compress the flame in the nozzle. So a couple of different reasons why you might have those uh, airflow holes. Yeah, we're almost done. Almost done. Okay, so here's a simplex nozzle here. Uh, what do you see on that little nozzle? Uh, it's a carbon. What do you see? Who said what? Well, carbon. 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 Yeah. Exactly. So anytime you have fuel, fuel has a lot of sulfur in it, uh, it has a lot of hydrocarbons in it, and anytime you burn it, it goes back to its constituent parts, and so that's going to start to start to crawl all over the nozzle. But go down in a little bit deeper here. What do you see down in this area, like right in here? What do you see sulfur? There? What's that? Is that more sulfur? A little more sulfur? And as we burn that sulfur, what does it turn into? Right down in here. So remember, we have this ring around the nozzle here that we set the shape of the nozzle with. The shape of the fan that comes out of the nozzle. And you start obstructing it with this stuff here. Could be sulfur, could be carbon. What's that going to do to the shape of the cone as it comes off the nozzle? The shape is going to be where you see Okay, so you're out there watering. Uh, Sam's out there watering her roses, right? She's got her, got her garden hose. She's being trying to be really gentle, but her foot's getting all wet. Why would your foot get wet? Nozzle dripping on your foot, right? Yeah. yeah. So you don't want that to happen. You don't want any drips to come off these nozzles at any speed because any liquid fuel that touches a combustion can does what? Burns. So that I'm out of time. <laughs> All right, so general maintenance on these nozzles, there's really nothing you can do in the field unless you're dealing with something like a C250 here. Um, know that uh, it's just going to be removal and replacement. Cleaning, a lot of times it can take some of these smaller nozzles apart. Most times it takes a repair station to go through these nozzles. But what you do is you put them in a caustic cleaning solution in an ultrasonic cleaner and you run pressurized cleaning material through the nozzle while it's in the ultrasonic cleaner. <coughs> what that does, it gets all the carbon out of the inside as well as the, in, as the outside of the nozzle. Okay? And then there's the bench testing for flow rates and cone shape and also the misting qualities of different pressures and flows. So it's... Um, I'm going to call it 10 after. Be back at 10 after 8, and we'll get started on the shop. The guys at the engine uh, later this evening, I don't know, maybe early now, uh, but we'll do a uh, checkout on the turbine. So we'll get you guys going back the other direction on the engine. All right, and the rest of you, I'll be around.